So we would, um, depending on uh, the, depending on the uh, where you work, uh, in which country you work, really. Uh, so, for example, let's say for the United Kingdom as an example, because I, that's where I that's where I work. So uh, you would be. Um, you would always start with the uh, steroids. There are some recommendations for certain doses of oral steroids, for example, at least 40, but rather, but, but preferentially 60 milligrams of oral prednisolone. And uh, the duration of treatment is controversial. You would want to make sure that you have remission of disease. If you just use the steroids, you can use the, the CRP and the ESR or as inflammatory markers to actually monitor that this has normalized. And then in agreement with the patients, and depending on the type of presentation, you can typically after six months or nine months or a year um, discuss uh, potentials, uh, potentially stopping the treatment. Uh, you always try to use, of course, the the the, the, the minimum effective dose. Um, on the other hand, if you have a presentation of uh, uh, visual loss, which can sometimes can be irreversible, that's why we need to act quickly. And uh, I think every uh, medical student is uh, uh, taught early on in their career that this is something that you should think about as a presentation, particularly in older people, then you would be justified in, depending on where you work, in starting with uh, tocilizumab from the start. Um, not in the United Kingdom, for example. So we would be allowed to use it for uh, relapsing disease. Say, for example, that you reach a point where you're fairly convinced that the disease, that the inflammation has been controlled, and you agree with the patient that slowly you can taper and then stop the steroids, and then you have a, clean, a clear clinical relapse, the better is, it is documented, the, 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 better, the, the better in terms of the uh, authorization of uh, using tocilizumab. You would then be allowed to restart the steroids, but also add tocilizumab. You could also use it in patients that you know are particularly at risk of steroid-related side effects or complications, so people with significant osteoporosis. This is, of course, frequent in older patients. Uh, or patients that do not seem to respond to the steroids, which is unusual, but uh, not impossible. In an ideal world, the impression is that once you have the patient on steroids and tocilizumab, and you are able to significantly reduce reduce the amount of steroids that they are exposed to chronically and therefore the risk of side effects on the bones and infections and the uh, very various corticosteroid side effects, uh, you would be probably uh, reasonable to consider continuation of treatment with tocilizumab because it really seems to work. We've become much more familiar with it during the pandemic because uh, of the use in the uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So um, with much more uh, experience, not only the specialists, but also anybody dealing with immune-mediated diseases, uh, to, to, uh, we have a lower threshold to use tocilizumab because we've used it so much in the pandemic.